25 years. Your home for Minnesota Twins baseball. The Twins try to bounce back from a tough loss to the Royals in the series opener last night. It's the second game of a three-game series between these Central Division rivals tonight at Target Field. Just about three weeks ago, Andrew Albers made his Major League debut in Kansas City against the Royals and shut them out for eight and a third innings. Followed it up with a two-hit shutout here. In his next start, he faces the Royals for the second time, and that means Billy Butler, who homered last night in the last two seasons against the Twins. Nobody has more hits against Minnesota pitching than Butler, who's piled up a 391 average. The Royals will send left-hander Danny Duffy to the mound. He's pitched just nine and two-thirds innings in the big leagues this year. One win without a loss in a 1.86 ERA. Brian Dozier had a two-base hit for the Twins last night. Continuing what's been a remarkable power surge for the leadoff hitter for Minnesota. Only Chris Davis has more extra base hits in all of baseball since the 1st of June. Welcome to Target Field with Tom Kelly. I'm Anthony LaPanta. Brian Dozier has surprised some with this power surge because he didn't show it early in the season. Had only six extra base hits in the first two months. But you have not been surprised by his ability to hit for extra no, base power. I'm not surprised about anybody hitting the ball hard anymore. A lot of guys walk up there and can pound it over the fence, and uh, uh, I think once they gain some confidence, now here comes the power. So, uh, as uh, Roy spoke about earlier, turning the hip, getting an idea of what he wants to do, having some success with that, builds more confidence, more confidence, better at bats, more quality at bats, more hits, more doubles, more everything. So, uh, Brian certainly taking off the second half of the season through his hard work. Him and Bruno, Tom Bernanski, our hitting coach, has done a wonderful job. So they're just moved forward. Finally now, got to clean up some of the other stuff going on on the field. Not covering second. On the pitch out last night, somebody got covered. The bunt, hit and run, clean some of these things up. Andrew Albers will be looking for an encore against the Royals. We'll preview his start next.
Ford. Visit NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. By Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. And by the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. After a couple of disappointing losses, the Twins still have a chance to win this series against the Royals. Andrew Albers with a pretty good mark so far at Target Field. He can make the start tonight for the Twins in Game 2 of this series. Dick Bramer, Roy Smalley with you from Target Field. A little earlier, earlier this month, Andrew Albers literally was the international man of mystery. Nobody knew much about him. Certainly the Royals didn't. And he pitched very well in picking up a win in his first Major League start. Now the proverbial second time around for the Royals against Albers, who might already be showing some signs of uh, the league getting familiar with him. You know, when you're a spot pitcher and a pitch-to-contact guy, you have to be really good in your locations, in your pitch selections. The first two games out, he wasn't good. He was sensational. He threw the ball exactly where he wanted to, almost every pitch, and had two wins and no ERA to show for it. His next two starts, not really as bad as it looks. I would say he was about four pitches in each game away from being really pretty good. But the league is starting to learn about him and he's starting to learn about how he has to pitch in the big leagues, and this is it. When he's successful, get strike one. When he can get ahead, then he can go to his two fastballs, the cutter and the sinker. If he can throw those balls on the corners, he sets hitters up with change of speed, a big slow curveball, and a changeup. He mixes his pitches really, really well, and what I love about Andrew Albers is when he gets a hitter set up to, for a certain pitch, he can throw it to that spot and get him out. We'll see if he can do that tonight. Ordinarily, it's the Twins who've enjoyed a big edge in the season series with Kansas City. This year, it's the other way around. Twins hoping to win the last two games of the season series. Cuff, the Royals almost completed a shutout in his first major league start. Will make his second start against the Kansas City Royals. And Ned Yost has seen his team rebound from yet another losing streak. They had a seven game losing streak that brought them back down to the 500 mark, but now they've won three in a row against three different teams. The Menards batting order for Kansas City Alex Gordon, followed by. Emilio Bonifacio, Eric Hosmer, Billy Butler, Salvador Perez, Justin Maxwell, Jamie Carroll, Elcides Escobar, and Gerard Dyson. Andrew Albers on the hill. 
for the fifth time for the Minnesota Twins. Two really, really great starts. Two so-so starts, and we'll see if he can get back in the I'm going to throw this ball over and quality strikes mode that he was in his first two starts. And Alex Gordon will lead things off. Had the biggest hit for the Royals last night, a three-run double. Just a week ago, the Twins were in Detroit on their way to winning two of three, and the hope was that the Twins would uh, be able to maintain some good uh, baseball through the rest of the road trip and now into this homestand that uh, lasts just three games. But instead, the Twins had a disappointing weekend in Cleveland and terrible ball game last night. 1 0, Albers to Gordon. He'll be followed by Bonifacio and Hosmer. And 2 0. Anthony's 2 and 1. That Albers was able to pitch into the ninth inning in his major league debut speaks to his getting ahead of hitters, not just strike one, but then strike two. Snap bat. Morno backhands it. Albers to the bag. One away. Most of the bat ended up in short right center field. One down, and the Northland Ford defense for the Twins. Josh Willingham in left, Lee Thomas in center. Wilkin Ramirez getting the start in right field. Blue Floramon Dozier Morno, the infielders, Chris Herman, as has been the case in all of uh, the Albers starts uh, behind the plate. Hunter Wendelstedt, the home plate umpire, Alan Porter, Greg Gibson, Jerry Lane, the base ups. One down, and Emilio Bonifacio, the batter. The Royals are getting a real good look at him at second base. Last night he played third base. There's strike one. You look at the starting lineup for the Royals here tonight, Roy. Three of the nine in the batting order were acquisitions in recent weeks for the Royals Bonifacio, Maxwell, and Carroll. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. The Royals trying to plug in some players into some spots. They thought that they were just a little bit deficient here for the last run, kind of drive here, trying to get into the wild card spot. This is what we saw a lot of in Kansas City. Albers ahead 0 and 2 and now 1 and 2. He made a really good point about uh, how many times he not only got ahead but got ahead uh, with two strikes. And the other thing is that when he did fall behind when he didn't throw the first pitch over he threw the next pitch over. He, right. he was very rarely 2 and 0. If he was 1 and 0 he got 1 and 1 real quickly. Ball third strike two down. And that's a beautiful thing right there. If Hunter Wendelstead is going to call that pitch right there for Andrew Albert, he's got a chance to have a real nice ball game. Because this bit, young man can throw it down there. We know that. He can throw low strikes. And, and it, it, if the umpire will call that pitch down there the whole game, he's got a real good chance. So two down. And Eric Hosmer, the batter. 13 and 4 against the Twins this year. Strike one. The four wins have come from unique spots given the fact that it was Albers in his major league debut, Kyle Gibson in his major league debut, and Samuel DeDuno, who was not on the 40 man roster at the start of the year. And Albers gets ahead 0 2. We just look at those two pitches right there, and I'm always amazed when you see guys in the Billings that can throw 98. You see, I know how guys can swing and miss that, but it's really wonderful to watch a guy that can pitch throw the ball by somebody at 88 miles an hour. Pop up behind third, Bluth chasing it and coming up a step short. A foul ball, still two strikes. Albers has impressed the Royals in their game so far with his ability to throw some off-speed stuff, some change-ups, and. Here's a good hitter, Eric Hosmer, who's having a good season and he's swinging the bat well right now. Albers painted the outside corner for strike one and then came in on him for, and with 88 miles an hour on the inside corner and threw it right by him. And, and that's the beauty of pitching. And it, it's just fun to watch a guy that throws 88, not 98, do well. Breaking ball off the plate, one and two.
the ground. Florimone has it from the outfield ground. Off target throw. Morno with the tag. Hosmer retired. And it's a 1 2 3 first inning. that he's pitched against them. And you can see the Royals would have to have a lot of season series like this one to get back to even par against Ron Garden higher than ours batting order for game two. Brian Dozier, Wilkin Ramirez, Justin Morno, Josh Willingham, Trevor Blue, Chris Herman, Chris Colabello, Lee Thomas, and Pedro Floromo. Danny Duffy on the mound for the uh, Kansas City Royals has been a traveling man this year. Up and down, up and down between Triple A and the, and the big leagues. Hurt his arm a little bit, recovering, recuperating, rehabilitating, and getting a chance to pitch in the big leagues again. First pitch strike to Brian Dozier, who in very limited battles with Duffy, covering a total of three at bats. He's already got two extra base hits. Started the ball game. Duffy started against the Twins in Kansas City with a triple. Then later added a double. Oh, and two. It'll be Dozier, Ramirez, and Morno. Brian Dozier hits left-handers real well, hitting them above uh, above 300 clip, I, I think. And you like seeing him up there. 0 oh, 2 pitch, got him out in front, a little pop up, short center field. And Dyson trots in, makes the catch one away. Northland Ford defense for the Royals. Alex Gordon is in left. Gerard Dyson in center. And Justin Maxwell in right. Former twin Carroll at third. Mike Mustaka still bothered by a strep throat. Escobar Bonifacio up the middle. Hosmer at first and Perez behind the play. And just a couple weeks ago, Jamie Carroll was still a member of the Twins. Very well respected by the manager, the coaches, and the Twins players. Here's Wilkin Ramirez. And inside ball one. Ramirez getting the start in right field. Ryan Domit had a tough game to catch. Took some foul balls off the mask. He'll start this day on the bench. Fouled away one and one. In the start in Kansas City where uh, Duffy really only pitched uh, about four innings. Maybe even a little bit less. And now so far tonight I've been, I've been impressed with his arm. He's, he's got a, a very very nice arm. Live fastball. Low 90s, 93, 94. Got good stuff. Base hit to left. Ramirez spanks a single with one out in the first. And that will bring up Justin Morno. Well, here he leaves one up and out over the plate. And that's a uh, spot that worked in Ramirez is pretty good. Up and out there. So the Twins have something going here. And I think it's important against left handed pitching for the right handers who normally hit left handers well to do the job. Uh, 
more know some of the other left hand hitters will battle as hard as they can but Ramirez Willingham those are those guys I think they need to they need to carry the load against the left hand one strike to Morno. And now one and one. Tom Kelly in the pregame show brought up uh, uh, a good game plan for Andrew Albers and the Twins, and that is get him a lead early. The Twins did that in his debut. They scored three first inning runs. Before Albert so much as threw a pitch. Foul back, and then in his next start, uh, here at home against Cleveland, they got a first inning run, and Albers went the distance. And we'll see if they can do anything with this one out single in the first. I think the point that Tom was making is that you can get to a guy like Albers if you make him get the ball up in the strike zone and don't chase. Said that very specifically, and getting a lead for him allows him to to uh, throw the ball over the plate down in the strike zone where he wants to be. Roll to the right side, and out at second is Ramirez. Morno reaching on the fielder's charge, and that'll bring up Josh Willingham. Good play by Bonifacio to get the lead runner here, even though the ball was. To, to his left, and Ramirez going very hard. Good slide. Really good slide in the uh, Escobar there. Preventing him from throwing. I don't think they would have gotten him anyway, but that would moved all down. Still got a lot of fist bumps in the dugout for doing it. You bet. Here's Willingham. Hitless in six at bats against Duffy. Missing the inside corner. And if this uh, pattern in the first inning continues, Twins right handed batters will see a lot of pitches in off the plate or near the inside corner. That appears to be what Duffy's game plan is here. Hit hard, but foul. And there's an example of why he wants to go in there. And if you've got a 92, 93 mile an hour fastball, looks pretty straight. You can't live in the center of the, of the strike zone, obviously, against any hitters, but especially good right hand hitters. You've got to get them in a hurry by thinking you're going to crowd them, make them so that that opens up the outside part of the play. Down the line. And Gordon with a diving catch in the corner. Very nice play by the two time Gold Glove a winner, a Gold Glove Award winner, Willingham Liner, the third out of the inning. Had a perfect inning. We'll face the middle of the Kansas City lineup: Billy Butler, Salvador Perez, and Justin Maxwell. 
Outside ball one Butler with an opposite field home run in his final at bat last night. Two and oh. Albers started the first inning by falling behind Gordon. Two and oh ended up getting him on a jam shot. Picking it up when you want to see your guys in the middle of the lineup pick it up. Two and one. Billy Butler is such a good hitter. Watched him for a long time. In the middle of the diamond, high average hitter, gets got a lot of base hits, a lot of doubles, didn't hit the ball in the ballpark a lot, but he's becoming better and better, a more mature and mature hitter all the time. Three and one, Perez on deck. Starting to set up pitches a little bit. He still has a real center of the diamond, opposite alley approach, but he'll pick his spots to look inside and and uh, really uh, drive the ball to his pull field or left field as well. He's just he's become a, a complete hitter. Foul back three and two. Full count of the leadoff man here in the Kansas City Center. Foul away. We showed you the graphic. His first two starts couldn't have gone better. Nearly two complete games, 17 and a third innings, only six hits, one walk, no runs. And I think the case can be made that he pitched better than the numbers would indicate in each of his last two starts. The numbers show five earned runs in each of his last two starts, 12 and two thirds innings total. On the ground, hit right at Dozier. Butler retired, one away. One gone in the second. Let's go find Kevin Gore. Hey guys, tonight's cold hard fact is brought to you by Frostburg Coors Light. Interesting numbers here, guys. We've talked about the Royals about the Twins number all season long. With 13 wins this season against the Twins, Casey has the most wins in a season series since recording 14 against the Tigers 10 years ago back in 2003. The only way the Twins are going to prevent that number from being tied or eclipsed is by winning the last two games of this series and for the first time all year win a series against the Royals. Chopper off the line foul. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, it's been odd. Usually six series between divisional opponents. You can count on the Twins winning four of them. One might be split. Royals might win one, but it's been so heavily imbalanced in the Twins' favor. This is really peculiar this year. One strike to Perez. Up and away, one and one. The Royals have improved their club greatly. They really have. They've got, they've got an awful lot better on the starting staff over, over the offseason, and we've seen that. The bullpen is is the best in uh, in the league, and so that's going to give you a chance to win some games against everybody. Long run for Cleet Thomas, and he won't get there. He'll play the carom, or the carom will play him. It's a double for Salvador Perez, driving the ball over 400 feet off the scoreboard in right center. That'll bring up Justin Maxwell. Perez wasn't around for the first Albert start in Kansas City, and you don't need a scouting report for this guy to hit a ball up and out over the plate like that. Good hitter, big, strong guy. He likes to extend his arms on pitches out over the plate, and he hit this ball a ton. This is a home run everywhere in the world except for here. Justin Maxwell has put up good numbers since his acquisition. By the Royals. Bonifacio's done well since the Royals picked him up. Maxwell fouls it at the plate. A few moments ago, I said I thought you, know, you could make the case that Albers' last two starts have been better than the numbers indicated. First time he gave up a run, it was against the White Sox. He gave up a first inning run and then a four run inning uh, in the uh, fourth inning. Vicieto hit a three run home run. He finished that outing, however, by retiring the last 10 batters. And then he made a start against the Tigers. And he, I thought, pitched awfully well. Five and two thirds innings, just a couple of runs allowed. Swing and a miss. And then he gave up with two outs in the sixth, three straight hits. Came out of the ball game. Josh Renicky gave up a three run home run, and two of those runs tagged on to Albers total. But 
I thought in retrospect he gave the Twins an awfully good start that day. Well, I agree with you, Greg. That's what uh, I mentioned at the top of, the, of our show here today. I think I thought he was three or four pitches in each start away of each loss there of being very, very good. There's a strike. And Maxwell's gone on strikes, two down. And that's what I really like about Andrew Al Albers. That's a great example of it. When he gets a hitter set up for a certain pitch, he's got him set up for a fastball, a little cut on the inside. He's able to throw it there and throw it right on the spot. You see a lot of guys, they know they want to go in there, but it'll either be six, eight inches inside, in which case it, it allows the hitter to get back in the count, or they leave it back over the plate and the ball will get hammered somewhere. But Albers has the ability so far in all five and four plus these few batters into this fifth start to throw the ball pretty much where he wants to throw it. Jamie Carroll making his first appearance against the Twins since the trade. Doesn't hit much for the Royals since they acquired him just one hit. Had an 0 for 17 skid to start his Kansas City career. Inside. One hit, 21 at bats, and Carroll three hits away from 1,000 in his career. Runner at second, two down. One and one to Carroll. Chopper to short. Florimo has it, throws low, and Morneau has to dig it out. Two errant throws by Florimo in the first two innings, and Morneau has saved the boat. No score after an inning and a half, and you can vote for who you think is the Arby's value player of the game. Just text value is space and the player's last name to 234-234. Let us know who you think had the most value in today's game, and we'll tell you the winner in the postgame show. Trevor Ploof to lead off the second, then Chris Herman and Chris Colabello. Another hot monkey night here at Target Field. A brief but uh, yet preparatory homestand for the road trip to follow. Where we have uh, six games in the state of Texas. Day game tomorrow here between these two teams, and then Friday night in Texas. Game time temperature supposed to be uh, just over 100 degrees. One strike to Plouffe hitting just under 300 against left-handers and just over 200 against right-handers. Down and away, one and one. With all due respect to Danny Duffy, he is not in the same class as the pitchers Andrew Albers normally has to face. Bluth takes outside two and one. In his debut, Albers had to face James Shields, the ace of the Kansas City staff. 
And then two starts later against the White Sox, his mound opponent was Chris Sale. In Detroit, it was Justin Verlander. Inside three and one. For Duffy, he may get there at some point, but he'll have to harness his control. That's been his biggest Achilles heel so far, even before the Tommy John surgery. That's to left center and down for a hit. Luke digs around first. He'll hold up with a leadoff single. And that'll bring up Chris Herman. Now is as good a time as any to get a group together and catch some baseball before the snow flies. Organize your business, church, school, or maybe a couple dozen of your neighbors. Make a game of it. Visit twinsbaseball.com slash groups or call 833 twins. Get a great deal of group tickets today. I'm sure you noticed being a Southern California native that I separated the reference to 100 degree temperature to snow falling by no more than a minute. <laughs> Here's Herman and there's strike one. Sometimes it seems like that's all that the Minnesota atmosphere <laughs> separates the two. <laughs> but you're right about Duffy's uh, control issues, both command of the strike zone with his fastball, which is so important, and then being able to consistently get a breaking ball over. Slow breaking ball. He did it there. Yeah, that was a very good one. There, there's an example of the kind of stuff that he has if he can harness it. And you're right in, in talking about him trying to get in on right handers. I think I mean, we started to say it's very important for a guy that has a straight fastball at 93 94 to pitch inside a lot because pitching out over the plate without movement doesn't really help him very much. You know, guys see the ball up and out over the plate, ball straight. All the balls have been hit hard against him. So far, the Twins have hit have been up and out over the plate. He hasn't gotten him in a hurry, gotten the hitters in a hurry yet inside. Back to the mound. Duffy to short to first a double play. And Herman taps into a double play. Let's go now to Los Angeles for a Fox Sports 1 game break. See the American League Central with the Tigers losing last night. They're trailing again tonight to Oakland. And the Twins, if they're not careful, are going to be passed by the White Sox. White Sox playing good baseball, winning eight of their last ten. Here's Colabello, and there is strike one. Colabello getting the start yesterday, being named the International League's Rookie of the Year and MVP. I'm guessing. If you're going to win both those awards, you'd better do it in the same year. Because if you were the rookie of the year in the International League, if you're back for a second year, something went terribly wrong in your career path. <laughs> right? I mean, you if you're a rookie of the year in Triple A, you better get a pretty good shot the next year in the big leagues, don't you think? Swing and a miss. Colabello gone on three pitches. Twins get a hit, but face. Uh, Duffy faces just three men in the inning.
presented by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Grand Casino, the best stories start here. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, for the everyday competitor in all of us. Last night, seven scoreless innings to start the game tonight. A pair, Escobar, Dyson, and Gordon here in the third. And first pitch, a strike. 85 mile per hour fastball down the middle. Strike one. And strike one, the most important part of that sentence. <laughs> Strike two. Do you think it makes as much difference as it used to that the Royals now are facing Albers for the, the second time? And the reason I ask is with so much video out there now, by the time Albers pitched against the Indians, they had a full game of his uh, pitches that were, I'm sure, scoured and studied. And I know there's no substitute to actually being in the box. But by the time he faced the Indians, they must have had a pretty good idea of what he threw and frequencies he might have. But has that changed at all over the years, do you think? I think having video helps a lot. But uh, the point that you made about there being no substitute for seeing a guy in person standing in that batter's box uh, against him, I mean, there, there really is no substitute. There, you, you can't tell on video that his delivery is a little sneaky. You know that it's a little deceptive. That you can't really tell exactly how much the cut fastball cuts, and you can't really tell that that slow curveball that registers at 65 is can really possibly be that slow. You know, I mean, you have to get in the box and experience it for yourself. Number one, but the other the other part of that is that if a pitcher is able to throw the ball where he wants to on both sides of the plate, as Escobar fouls off another one. If he's able to work both sides of the plate as effectively as Alvarez has done and stay out of the middle and get strike one and change speeds, you can see him for six, seven, eight times. It doesn't matter. I think about Larry Gura and, and Catfish Hunter and Jimmy Key. I mean, those guys, Tom Glavin, you knew what he had. I mean, you know, guys saw him for a long time and, and he was just able to consistently throw the ball. In spots where it was hard for hitters to get a rhythm and, and, and really square up the ball enough times to put together a, a big, any big innings. Three and two. And another foul ball. Escobar having a battle here with Albers who got ahead of him 0 and 2. Now some uh, full count fouls. Escobar with a couple of hits against Albers earlier this month. Albers gave up just four hits, two of them to Escobar, two of them to Hosmer. Another 3 2 pitch. And another foul ball. Four two strike fouls for Alcides Escobar. Thirty innings coming into the game and a total of 11 strikeouts for Albert. So he is the quintessential pitch to contact guy. Wobbler to Florimo and finally Escobar's put away one down. Dyson will hit, but not until we uh, tell you that you can get interactive with us on our AT&T Twitter poll. We're asking you which league do you think will be more dangerous in the postseason this year? You can tweet your answer using the following hashtags: AL postseason or NL postseason. And of course, I'm an American League guy, but I really don't know. How I would answer that. I've always liked the Tigers. I think they have all the components in place to uh, go very deep into the playoffs. The Red Sox have been a first place club all year long. Don't hear much about the Rangers, but there they sit on top of a dangerous division, one and one. When you look at the National League and you look at the great pitching staff that Atlanta has and their ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And Best record at, in baseball. You Atlanta look, Braves. Right. You look at the great pitching staff that the Dodgers have and the way those guys are starting to hit. And it's, it's a difficult question. I agree with you. Two and one to Dyson. What I think it means is that postseason is going to be really fun. 
there's going to be some good players that, uh, competing and some good teams battling each other. On the ground to Dozier. Two down. One impressive thing about Albers in his last start. He had uh, given up some hits three of them in one inning to the Tigers but. Didn't give up a run then in the next inning. Ryan Holiday hit a home run. Jackson was aboard at second base and Miguel Cabrera came to the plate. Now at this point. Albers had thrown in the neighborhood of 50 pitches had already. Given up a run and he got two strikes on Cabrera and the count ran to three and two. And Albers reached back for a pitch he had not thrown yet to that point. A very slow breaking ball to the best hitter in the game. And he got him to swing and miss way out in front of it. But a very slow breaking ball, I would think, would be a field pitch. And he hadn't really thrown it in the first three innings. And yet in this key at bat, with the top run producer in the game at the plate, he felt yeah. confident enough in it. <laughs> Let's break out something new here. For him. <laughs> See how that works. But that you know what I mean? I, I mean, that, exactly really, what you mean. that made an impression with me, and I'm, it had to make an impression with Cabrera because no one had seen the pitch all day long. And I guarantee you that's what's going on right now between Chris Herman and Andrew Albers. They're, they're holding some stuff uh, back. We haven't seen the big break. Well, I haven't really seen the changeup. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think we, should, we might have seen one or two. Change us, but not a steady diet. And, and what impresses me about Albers, I was thinking about this just a minute ago in that Escobar at bat when he fouled off some of the pitches. You know, just a straight sinker baller depends on keeping the ball down. It got to be down, down, down. But sooner or later, in a long at bat like that, That's this ball juiced. The deep right center. And gone. A home run for Gordon. His 15th of the year, and he just got it over the wall into the flowers. The Royals get the first run. And Alex Gordon home run. Yeah, and Albers just contradicted what I was uh, in the middle of saying about how impressed I was with him throwing the ball on the corners where he wants. And here's a ball in the middle of the plate. And I have to tell you now, it's pretty soon we're going to have to quit throwing the ball out over the plate to Alex Gordon because that's where he's looking for the ball, especially against left-handers. He was against Steel Ball last night when. Now a bone attempt. Albers underhands it, makes an easy play on Bonifacio to end the inning. And it's a run for the Royals on a two-out home run by Alex Gordon. It's one nothing Kansas City. Minnesota State Fair, and I'm in front of the fried pickle stand, one of my favorite foods at the fair. But this year, showing something a little different. The yellow powdered sugar on the deep fried pickle, you dip it in chocolate. Uh, I'm not real sure about the combination, but we'll give it a try. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Who knew? Pickles and chocolate? Who knew? Um, thank you, Marnie. And I, I'm just glad it's her eating a deep fried pickle with chocolate and not me. Strike to Thomas, two of them now, as he leads off the third inning for the Twins. Thomas Florimone and Dozier in the Twins third, down a run to Danny Duffy. There's, uh, Duffy's version of the slow breaking ball left it up high. Thomas called out on strikes the 1,119th strikeout for the Twins this year too short of the team record set in 97. Well, last night as uh, uh, we're looking at Pedro Florimon who pitched a uh, run call to pitch out and nobody covered second base that's a, that's on the shortstop I, I have to say even if even if if uh, Dozier is, is uh, in on that, that's on the showstop. Uh, infield coach Joe Vava talking to both of them, saying, "What the heck is going on? We pitch out. We think the runner is uh, is going, and nobody covers. You have to know the signs. You have to look at the signs." What I suspect happened there is that they were pitching out, thinking that there might have been a squeeze on, and I and I think Florimone and Dozier thought, "Well, as they're throwing through the." Uh, third not we're not throwing down the second anyway so why do we need to cover but that's just not the way to play the game you have to you have to go ahead and cover second base uh, just just in case you never know what might happen uh, and uh, you don't do yourself any good as the pitch is uh, being pitched out and whatever happens steal squeeze whatever standing in your position not doing anything so I think that's what they had to get straight three and one to four them and that's that's uh, what Tom Kelly was alluded to in the pregame show. We got to get some of these things cleaned up. Right? You know, Tom was so great at making sure that the details were uh, were covered uh, in, uh, in Twins' behavior out there on the field. And we got some, got some messy details out there right now, a little bit this year. That uh, that's what uh, the former skipper was talking about. Well, here's my understanding of it. Please tell me if I'm wrong, because there's it, there's a great likelihood of that. <laughs> Domit is a 3 2 pitch to Florimone. And a foul back. Domit came out in front of home plate, made the signs saying, All right, uh, if the guy takes off, we are not going to throw through because well, we think the guy might be trying to come in from third base. But then from the dugout, the sign was given to pitch out. Now, to me, that's a trump card, is it not? No, actually, that uh, that's not a uh, trump card. That's a. Uh, that was just a different nice swing. Good at that right there by Florida. Taking that ball the other way. I sure like seeing him do that right handed here for a little while. He's been struggling right handed. Love to see him go the other way and get some hits that way a little bit. Uh, Trying to get himself back on track. But the pitch out there really was in defense of the uh, of the squeeze. Okay. And and I think that uh, uh, Goldman didn't come out and give another sign. After he gave the sign and come back, nothing in the pitch out. It would have been okay for him to come back out and give the other sign and say we're still doing this or that. But it's about uh, that was about the squeeze and the, and the guys in the middle infield just kind of relaxed. They thought, well, we, you know, we're they're pitching out but not throwing down here. Why do we have to move? And and that's just not the way to that's not the way to play the game because you know anything might happen. It might throw. It might have been a squeeze. The uh, batter might it might not have been a. a Great pitch up. The batter might have been able to contact the ball in the fair territory. Someone's got to cover second. Someone's got to cover first. I mean, you got to be you got to be ready to move out there. One strike to Dozier. Florimone checked at first. He is a threat to steal. The Twins don't have many threats like that. Florimone uh, tied for the team lead with 10 steals. Only 41 stolen bases on the season. Florimone has 10, and Dozier has 10. Long hold. 
and inside one and one just one more point about that I will tell you that in the old days and I don't know how many how often teams are trying to steal signs now but in the old days we had some guys there were some guys that could steal signs from managers and coaches and catchers if the catcher goes out and gives a series of signs and then they pitch out and nobody moves. You're pretty sure that one the sign that he gave was worth, worth throwing the third, and you know you know that one right now. So just at, even from a decoy standpoint, you should be moving around like like you know what you're doing. Well, and then too, if you're pitching out, there's no chance of uh, the uh, batter, very little chance of the batter putting the ball in play. And there's always a place for you to go on the baseball field right. and if you're a middle infielder second base is the place to be. Right. That, that's, a, that's that's where the shortstop should be. In that, in that Two and one to Brian Dozier. Wrap down the line foul. So I got here about three o'clock and this is what I saw. Yep. <laughs> you know if you're going to mess up that badly we're not going to have that boys. This is what guard is saying. You got to use your head. We're not going to have that kind of stuff so they did work on some ground balls and some double plays and things like that but the but the conversation was not about double plays at which they've been very very good this year the conversation was about it's more than just making double plays catching ground balls and, and the like this is about using your head and being in the game and as Tom Kelly said cleaning up the details the little things that help you win games fly to center Dyson is there Dozier retired out number two That'll bring up Wilkin Ramirez. Now you would think a better chance for Floramon to go. Ramirez with a single to left is first time up. Each of the twins are about to set a club record for strikeouts. Duffy has a couple of them. He's struck out Colabello and Thomas. And the club record for strikeouts is just two strikeouts away, 1,121. We're still in August. And Florida oh, got great a great job. Take it. Yes, please. Thank you, Wilkin. Good job by Wilkin Ramirez right there. I got to tell you. There was going to be no play, and I think Ramirez could see how good a jump that was. And took a fastball right down the middle, not being selfish. Or maybe he was. Maybe he said, I'd rather hit with a guy on second. <laughs> but RBI, but though, he's going to, he, my man's going to be on second if I don't mess this up. One strike to Ramirez. And Florimon dancing off second base. The things you have to think about as a hitter, and you can't give the pitcher too much credit for being able to throw what he wants to all the time. But Ramirez hit a bullet on a ball out over the plate. It's the first time up. Now you see the catcher has moved in. They're going to pitch him in. You've got to understand that he's, see, there you go. He's trying to throw it in and can't. But that doesn't mean it shouldn't be in your mind right now as a hitter. What are these guys going to try to do to me to get me out? And probably I've proven to them that a fastball. Belt high out over the plate is, is not the best way to pitch to me, and they're going to try to do something else. So you have to be thinking a little bit about what they're trying to do. One and one to Ramirez again, the target inside. Swing and a miss. Didn't have many opportunities last night. Of course, the ones they had, they let slip through their fingers against James Shields until the eighth inning. Now a chance, a two-out hit to the outfield would tie the game. Foul tip, a strikeout to end the third, and it's one nothing Kansas City.
gave up a home run to Alex Gordon with two gone in the third inning. It's one nothing Kansas City. There's our Pepsi fans of the game. Mike Vitnovic on the right, who was up here working stats for us last night, bringing his sister to the ball game. And he's got his phone out, his device out, so he'll be well aware that he has been beamed throughout Twins territory as our Pepsi fan of the game. Eric Hosmer leads off the fourth against Albers. Down and away, ball one. Hosmer bounced to short to wrap up a one, two, three first inning. Two hits for the Royals. They've both been extra base hits. And the Royals twice have taken target practice on the scoreboard and right. Perez hit it, and Gordon lifted one over the scoreboard for the lone run of the game so far. One and one to Hosmer. Hit to center. And Thomas makes the catch one away. That'll bring up Billy Butler. You can ask a question at carsoup.com slash baseball. Randy over in Elk River, not too far from uh, where I live. Who are some of the names we can expect to see once September call-ups begin? Ultimately, it'll be it's up to that, it's up to that man right there. Go over and ask him between <laughs> innings. I'm sure he has nothing more on his mind right now. <laughs> I would imagine. Well, it's really going to be interesting. You'd, you'd think guys like Hicks and Parmalee who started the year with the ball club might get called up but neither one of them has hit at all well in triple A. Hicks hitting below 200 Parmalee hitting I think 230 down in triple A. Those would be the first names that you would think about but I would tell you something about Mr. Ryan. It's my impression that he is a of a um, meritocracy bet. I, I, he, he's not one. To fail to send a message to someone that was in the big leagues, goes down to AAA. If he doesn't go down there and tear it up down there and doesn't look like he's giving his best effort, he will not be here either, even if he if you would think that he's a potential future big league player. Just ask Brian Dozier. Yeah, he thought right. he was going to be uh, called up in September and the twins said, Well no. Just yeah. No, not uh, didn't quite show the uh, the work ethic that we thought ought to ought to happen. He wanted to send a message there, and I think that was a great Great move on their part. I think it got Brian's attention, and we've seen what's happened uh, this year uh, with his performance. So, it, to answer the question uh, specifically, I don't know. It's hard to tell. There will be pitchers called up. That's where the biggest need is, especially with an overworked bullpen that the Twins have dealt with. And I suppose it's not out of the question. It depends on Joe Maurer's situation, of course. It's not out of the question. The Twins might add yet another catcher. If Joe, whenever he comes back, if it's deemed, look, it, let's just not put him behind the plate anymore this year. You don't want to have just two catchers through September. So, uh, and we don't anticipate that being the case with Joe, but with the concussion situation, you really don't know. Two and two. Chopped to third. Ploof has a play. Morno can't feel that throw. It's the third poor throw fired across the diamond. Two by Florimone and now one by Plouffe. And this one will be charged as an error to Plouffe. Well, Trevor has plenty of time here. He takes his time and then kind of aims it over there to, to first base. And that's one issue I think that Trevor really has some, some issues with is uh, throwing the ball over there, especially on place where he has time. And, I went through some a, a stage like that when when I was playing shortstop early in my career, and I finally decided that I if I was going to throw it away, I was it wasn't going to be because I. There's oh, a that deep ball's drive to left. Perez, who doubled to deep right center, his first time up, hits one into the second deck, and it's three to nothing. So Perez. Terribly unimpressed with Andrew Albers. He didn't face him in Kansas City in Albers' debut. And he's absolutely crushed two of Albert's pitches on two swings here tonight. And watch where this pitch is. A little slider it looked like, and it's just right in the middle of the plate. Just settled right there in the plate for Perez to hit. And this is one thing, he's a pretty smart guy, I think. I've been watching Perez for a while now. 
And I think he was looking in there after hitting the ball so far out over the plate, just like we were talking. Now, what's, what are they going to try to do to me? I think he saw what Alvarez did carving up both sides of the plate uh, in Kansas City against his teammates, and he was uh, still recovering from uh, some concussion symptoms. And he was a smart guy and a catcher, and I think he said, okay, I hit the ball out over the plate, now I'm looking in because he goes back and forth. Albers covers the bag. Morno gets him the ball. Two down. That'll bring up Carroll. Joined Fox Sports North at the Minnesota State Fair. Now through Labor Day at 1311 Underwood Street across from the Ballpark Cafe. And tomorrow meet Fox Sports North girls Kendall and Jenny. From 1 to 5 p.m. You can register to win tickets to your favorite hometown team games. Plus autographed Kent Herbeck merchandise courtesy of Carrier. You can also record a free sports update. Log on to FoxSports.com, click on the upcoming events banner for complete details. Jamie Carroll, the batter, hit a bouncer to Florimone his first time up. Ball one. This hit to center. And Thomas is there to end the inning. Two runs for the Royals, one earned, one unearned. And it's three to nothing. Daniel Duffy so far been pretty good. Line on him. The scouting report, he gets a little wild, but he has not been. And for the Kansas City Royals, a couple of long bombs. One from Alex Gordon, and then this one from Salvador Perez. And it's led to a 3 0 Kansas City lead. Pitches up to Justin Morneau, ball one. Morneau reaching a fielder's choice his first time up. Morno, Willingham, and Bluth. Most experienced Twins hitters. And now outside 2 0. Real, real good inning to get something going here against Danny Duffy for the, for the Twins. Come right back and put some kind of number on the board. Give uh, Andrew Albers, keep him in the game, keep him working hard. Give, you, give the bench, get everybody excited. Let this game get out of hand and get a little sleepy here. Come right back. So through a high fastball, two and one. The right center field, hanging in the air for Maxwell. He makes the catch one away, and that'll bring up Willingham. Twins tickets remain available and affordable, and the price starting at just eight dollars. A lot of baseball left at Target Field, and you can check out the steal of the week and demand-based pricing for more great deals on single-game purchases all season long. 
every day of the week you can find something new at twinsbaseball.com slash tickets or by calling 800 33 twins not much of a home stand here three games in less than 72 hours strike one to Willingham but when we come back from the Texas trip twins have three with Toronto three with Oakland three with Tampa three with Detroit and four with Cleveland before the season wraps up. 16 of the remaining 23 games here at Target Field after the Twins uh, go through Texas. Two strikes to Willingham. Off the plate one and two. In. He's there for the catch. Another fly ball out. Two down. That will bring up Ploof. Ploof with a single. Leading off the second inning, but then Herman bounced into a double play. Twins knew they were going to face a Kansas City lefty tonight. They thought it was going to be Bruce Chen. But then yesterday, as the Royals were getting ready to open the series, they decided to call up Duffy, move Chen to tomorrow, and send Wade Davis to their bullpen. Strike on the outside corner, one and one. And a strikeout of Plouffe ends the inning. And the Twins have tied their 12th record for strikeouts in the season. They were standing smack dab in the Minnesota State Lottery winner's circle. 100 scratch-off tickets for the birthday boy, 73 years young, a former Marine. Richard, what's your favorite part about being here on your birthday? Well, the, my favorite part is being alive. Last year at this time, I was in intensive care. And they didn't expect me to live. Now you're doing pretty well. You just shot 43 in the front nine. Shot 43 in the front nine, but I lost. My opponent had a 41, but still I was within two. Within two, and you're going to get 100 scratch-off tickets for your birthday all the way down from Clear Lake, from one Richard. Guys, 
back to another pretty cool deal. <laughs> Good to have you with us. See if the Twins can get this game turned around behind three to nothing. They'll see these Escobar will lead off the fifth against Andrew Alberts. This one lifted to right. And Ramirez is there for the catch. A quick first out. Let's go now to Los Angeles for a Fox Sports 1 game break. Well, thank you very much. Last night it was Justin Verlander. Tonight, Doug Fister getting absolutely ripped to shreds by the A's. One strike, the count to Gerard Dyson. The Tigers showed some vulnerabilities to the Twins. Now a really good Oakland team, a hot team. Throttling them tonight. A big series coming up this weekend if the Indians can drive to left center field. And Willingham won't catch it. And Dyson can run like the wind. It's a ground rule double. Yeah, Twins got a break there. Yeah, it's a break. Dyson has to hold at second. And it's a one out double in the fifth. These left handed hitters against Andrew Alvarez are just look like they're looking for the ball out over the plate, looking to go in the middle of the field someplace. Dyson not known for his power, hit that ball a long ways, and the Twins did catch a break. He's on third, standing up if that ball stays in the ballpark. Here's Gordon, the big three run double last night. And he started the scoring tonight with a home run into the flowers over the scoreboard. Comes off the second. And Dyson back easily. Well, I'm just going to vote right now for let's not throw Alex Gordon a fastball out over the plate. This is where he's looking for the ball against left handed hitters. And I don't think it's a bad plan at all. Left handers don't like to come in on left, left hand hitters, but Gordon is just feasting on the ball out over the plate. That's where he's looking for it. Gets one on the outer half, taken for a strike. Every time they try to move him out of the leadoff spot into the middle of the lineup, things don't go well for him or the Royals. So for now, they'll lead him in the leave him in the leadoff spot. One strike. Lifted to left, and Willingham retreats a few steps. Dyson setting up for a possible tag, and with him, you have to be very careful. Not many times will a runner tag from second go to third, but Dyson, the candidate to do just that, two down. And that'll bring up Bonifacio. Better pitch there to Alex Gordon, the slider moving away from him, even though he's looking out over the plate, different speed, a little bit further out. But two nights in a row now against left handers. Last night against Ke uh, Caleb Theobald, as I started to say earlier, Gordon's a home, uh, home running back. Just went up there looking for the ball out over the plate. Got it. Got it hit the bases loaded double to break the game open. And then the same exact pitch from another left hander tonight. He hit the seats. Really got to move his eyes around a little bit because he is, looks to, to me to be locked in against left handers looking for fastballs right out of the plate. Here, here's where it was. Look at this pitch. That's the ball he's looking for right there. The ball out over the plate. He's just convinced himself that left handers aren't going to come in. And so he's looking for it. Right there's the same. There is the exact same pitch. And you've got to move him off of that zone right there. You've got to pound him in a little bit and, and say, you know, you don't get to just stand up there and look for that pitch. Strike one to Bonifacio. Struck out looking in the first, trying to bunt his way aboard right after the Gordon home run. And Albers easily threw him out. The knuckles back to the screen, two strikes. Catchers need to pay attention to uh, uh, what hitters are, uh, are doing up there. And I noticed a pitch last night early in uh, Alex Gordon at, at, at bat, at, at, at early at bat against Correa, where Correa threw him right on the inside corner or just off. It didn't miss by much if it missed. And Gordon really straightened up like it, like it really shocked him that the ball was in there. If, if you're a left-hand hitter, believe me, I like the ball from the middle of the plate in. I wanted to pull the ball. If you're looking in there, that doesn't shock you. That pitch, you might take it, but you take it comfortably because you're looking for a ball in there. If it's just off the plate, you might take it comfortably. If you're shocked, 
then somebody's got to notice that he's not looking for the ball in. He's looking for the ball out over the plate. Tyson to third and he'll steal easily. And the stolen base. One and two to the batter. Like he got there in five steps. Yeah, he just <laughs> he just had kind of timed uh, Alvarez. He's been giving him one look back there and then going to play. And so he waited for the one look and when Alvarez turned his head back to the play, he just took off. Land tight, two and two. Well, that's a little better. I like that pitch an awful lot. He wasn't throwing up around his head to try to hit it, but you you gotta you gotta move guys, let the guys know that you're coming in there every once in a while. And most big league hitters won't be intimidated by that, but they'll but it'll register with them that you're coming in there once in a while. Slow breaking ball lofted to right. Easy catch for Ramirez. And that ends the end. Three nothing and the city. Twins coming to bat in the bottom of the fifth, down three to nothing. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Minnesota Twins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Chris Herman leads off the fifth against Danny Duffy. And a swing and a miss. Herman, Colabello, and Thomas, and then Floramone, if somebody reaches, and all those guys are a high percentage strikeout guys the twins have tied the team mark for strikeouts in a season 1121 set by the 1997 twins team of uh, Rich Becker Marty Cordova Scott Stahoviak the 97 twins uh, about the only highlight for them There's a foul off of uh, Perez that was the year Brad Radke won 20 games, but the team won only 68. And we have more than a month to go yet. One and two to Herman. Bounced into a double play his first time up. Popped up. Short left. Gordon. Dyson, it's Gordon. One down. Fans, if you're looking for something extra special to take home after a game at Target Field, you can check out the kiosk at the ballpark that has a vast array of game used merchandise. From bats to balls to jerseys, all items used in a game here at Target Field. And you can check it out between gates 29 and 34 out in right field. Next time you're at a ball game, stop by and find something unique. Get tickets by calling 800 33 Twins or TwinsBaseball.com. 
Joe Mauer's bat is here. Joe Mauer is not. Still no timetable set for his gradual return to the lineup. Colabello struck out on three pitches in the second. And he strikes out or swings and misses on the first pitch here in the fifth. Seen a lot of that this year, not just from Colabello. Some of the veteran hitters that the Twins uh, uh, have have been over anxious at the plate. Last night, Will Smith came in and he struck out Chris Herman and Justin Morneau on seven sliders and none of, excuse me, there was one fastball high and tight to Morneau, but it wasn't a strike. He didn't throw one strike and he got six swings and misses. Called strike one and two. As I look at Chris Colabello and I, I see some of the monstrous home runs he's hit, and I can imagine somebody hit triple A, but he hits some long bombs to center and right center and right field. And it, he stands a long way away from the plate, which means he ought to be trying to hit the ball, which would mean that that's where he wants to hit the ball. When you're off the plate, I mean, a guy's stance at the plate will dictate to you a lot what he's trying to do. If he's standing up on top of the plate, he wants the ball in his way, he wants to pull it. If he's standing away from the plate, he wants the ball out away from the plate, and he wants to hit the ball out of the way. Now, that's a long way from the plate. But you see, he's got an open stance, and, it, and he swings at the ball like he's trying to pull it. Now, those two things are contradictory to me. See, see how he's flying open there. I mean, he has the ability to hit the ball in the upper deck in right center field here in, in target field. I mean, he can hit the ball a long, long ways. And Tom Budansky, the hitter coach, has been... Now, now watch the swing. Now, here, this is not a swing trying to go to right field. See, his front hip goes. He, he, as soon as that front hip goes like that, the bat slows down. Watch his front hip. He steps and it opens, and now the bat is way too late. Now, if you're going to swing like that, then you've got to get up on top of the plate, make the ball be in on you, and that way the ball will get there quicker to you, and, and you've, got a, you've got a chance, in my humble opinion. I'm not the hitting coach. I do know that Tom Bernanski has been working with him, trying to get him to hit the ball to right field and right center like, like he does, like he did in, in AAA. And I, I'm guessing that he's just messed up right now, trying to do too much in the big leagues when he came up here, and... and Got himself in some bad habits, but it really looks to me like for Colabello, if he's going to stand a long way from the plate, he needs to close up his stance and just make up his mind he's going to he's going to hit the ball to right field because there's no there's no downside. He can hit the ball out of the ballpark there. One and two to Thomas. Just outside two and two. Duffy has pitched very well for the Royals here. Giving up just three singles. Picks up two more strikeouts in a one, two, three, fifth inning.
we'll look at some home run pitches, and I'm going to tell you that mid thigh high in the middle of the plate's a cookie for a left handed hitter, and it turned, it turned out to be so for Alex Gordon. And then a, a cutter that wanted to be inside, Alvis wanted inside to Perez, didn't quite get it in there, and that ball was launched in the second deck in left field. Osmer dribbles it up the line, easy play for Morneau. To the bag, one down. Billy Butler will bat, but first uh, we will take a look at our Sanford Health injury report, health report. Robinson Cano in the left hand by a pitch last night in Toronto, but not in the Yankee lineup tonight. And it seems like half the 24 home runs were hit against the Twins this year. That's <laughs> probably just my impression. The Yankees have had that type of a year. Just got Derek Jeter back in the at least in a very short term. Cano lost to them for a while. One strike to Billy Butler. Reached on a Trevor Plouffe throwing error. Foul away. Two strikes. Well, you're right, Dick. It does seem like Cano did an awful lot of home runs, but I'm against the Twins. That's the bad news. The good news is I just love watching that guy hit. He can, he can really hit. He's got a beautiful, beautiful approach at the plate. Foul back. Two strikes. Some. Uh, People think that this will be Robinson Cano's last year with the Yankees. I'll believe that when I see it, but straight up in the air. Albers wants it. And finally, Morno says, uh, We're both from Canada and I'm taller than you are. <laughs> or words to that effect. Two down. I think he said, I have it, eh? Boy, he pitched really, really nicely. It did Andrew Alvarez to uh, Billy Butler that time. Inside corner, outside corner, outside corner, back inside. Really, really well pitched at bat right there. And, and the young man has pitched well. He's, he's, he's thrown much like the White Sox start. And Perez glares out at the mound, takes his helmet off. He's, he's saying, if you, want to, if you want to hit me, hit me in the ribs, not in my head. And Albert. He wasn't trying to hit him. And now warnings given. Because not so much of where the pitch was, but how the batter reacted. The pitch looked like it was over the inside corner. You know, guys are so sensitive about that now. That's one of the biggest changes that I've seen in the game. This the, the pitch. He reacted like that. The ball was a little bit close, but I mean, he's, he's crushed the ball twice. And lines of foul, one and one. If you watch this, watch this pitch that comes in. You know, it, you see where Herman Carter, he, he wasn't that close. It, it, what he's reacting to saying, you want to hit me, hit me the ribs, not, not in my head. Neither one of them was intended, neither ribs nor head. It was a really good pitch. To say you can't just you can't just hit me, you can't just hit the ball against me hard every time you walk up there. I'm I'm coming inside, make you thinking about that. Now watch this ball is not that close. It's in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It's but he went down and he reacted because he knows that it looked like such a pur purpose pitch because he's crushed the ball twice. <laughs> and that's rocket. that's the way you answer. <laughs> that's exactly the way you answer as a hitter. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to threaten anything. You don't have to get the benches warned. You get up there and be a man and knock one and try to knock him off the mound. This is great. I, I'm sorry. I, I prefer the Twins and Brown Robbins, but that's a that's a great at bat by Salvador Perez. That's the way you answer that stuff. He's uh, hit three rockets against Albers. A double off the eye off the scoreboard in right center. Bluth has a go off as well, picked up by Florimo. And I suspect Bluth will get charged with another error there, and the inning continues. 
a throwing error earlier on Bluth. Now Maxwell's ground ball off his glove to Florimon. And Bluth is charged with the error. After the first error, Perez hit the very next pitch into the upper deck and left. Now, if Jamie Carroll does that, the uh, Royals may uh, carry him off the field. I don't know that Jamie Carroll could get uh, the second. You, uh, you'll have to wake me up <laughs> off the floor. <laughs> Inside ball one. I asked Ron Gardenhire yesterday. I said, uh, of the players you've managed, would the Jamie Carroll be most like? You and in typical self deprecating style, Darty said, No, Jamie Carroll could hit. I couldn't hit. Here's a flat ball to center. Thomas has it, and that ends the inning. And Albers kind of veered toward Perez. Perez veered toward the dugout. End of issue. A scoreless six. It's three nothing, Kansas City. Watching Andrew Albers on the hill tonight for Minnesota. He's one of the many young pitchers in the twin system, and that's the subject of tonight's Grand Casino Social Spotlight. We want you to tweet in with which young twins pitcher in the organization you are most excited about, and go ahead and tell us why as well. Use the hashtag YouthGoneWild to share your thoughts, and we will <laughs> share our favorites in our post-game show. Dick and Roy. All right, thank you, Jamie. Tom Kelly said that uh, you know Andrew Albers has been the talk of the town. He was after his first two starts. Funny thing happens. You uh, you don't give up any runs. Fans tend to get excited about you as a pitcher. <laughs> I would say. Loramone takes up an away ball one. Loramone with one of the three twins hits. He has the most recent twins hit. A one out sharp single to right. He stole second and was left there. Loramone's average from this side of the plate starting to recover. And he's had better at that. So it's tough. I would imagine you could relate to it better than anybody as a switch hitting shortstop. Just when you start feeling good, particularly from the right side of the plate, then you have a series of or two of games. Here's a ball hit into center. Dyson won't be able to get there. Another hit for Florimont. Then you don't see a left hander for a while, and that wonderful feeling you had from the right side uh, is gone before you ever really get to uh, enjoy it. Now is uh, time to take a look at the Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. Most extra base hits among second basemen this season. And Brian Dozier on that chart. Bunch of really good names on that uh, little graphic right there to which Brian Dozier has added his name. And good for him. I don't know if all of them happening here. 
since June the 1st. He's really, really come on. He's been a lot of fun to watch. A couple of fly balls to center so far. You know, if you're a left handed batter or switch hitter hitting left handed and you start feeling pretty good, you you might see two, maybe three left handers in a row, but you're gonna you're gonna face a right hander right around the corner. But sometimes or you go in the same game when you get there, your teammates will get that left hander out of there. That's right. You see a right hander reliever maybe. But it's tough when uh, you're struggling from the right side and you start feeling a good vibe and then you don't face left handed pitchers. It really is hard. I was talking with uh, Ryan Dolman about it during the, during the last home stand. He came over and said, OK, let's talk switch hitting and because he doesn't feel comfortable right handed right now. Feels real good left handed, which is the way with most of us because as you say, we see so many more right handers. All during our career, our young careers, as we get to the big leagues, most everybody right-handed pitchers. You tend to be better left-handed than, uh, than right-handed anyway. And you're right, Dick. When you, as a switch hitter, you get, start getting going well right-handed, and then not see a left-handed for a while, and you're still taking batting practice, but it's not the same. Perez with a snap throw to first, with a nice dig. One thing that Ryan and I totally agree with it, uh, each other about is that you are two completely different hitters that need the same amount of batting practice from both sides of the plate if you're a switch hitter, and it's very difficult to get there. There aren't too many left handed batting practice throwers uh, uh, around. You came back to the Twins, your manager was your left handed batting practice pitcher, right? right? Yeah, Don Kelly? Yep, yeah, he threw a lot of batting practice. I was good at it. Dozier shoots one foul, still two strikes. We'll see how Brian does here with uh, his two strike count. But that, that foul ball right there is, is an example of what I've talked about with Brian Dozier. He kind of changes his program with two strikes, waits a little longer, tries to shoot the ball the other way. Makes a close pitch, one and two. There's a changeup that we've seen a lot of twins hitters swinging and missing, and it's because they're they're concerned about getting out front on that fastball, and they see they see the ball come out of his hand, looks like a fastball, and they're way out in front of him. Brian's waiting a little bit longer, trying to hit the ball the other way, protecting the two strikes. Another fly ball to center. Dyson will gather this one in. One away. We'll bring up Wilkin Ramirez now on FoxSportsNorth.com. Jerry kills hooky note, allowing you to attend Thursday's Gophers game. The Vikings Joe Webb's transition from quarterback to wide receiver. And five things to watch in tomorrow's Vikings Titans game. Runner on, one out. And here's Wilkin Ramirez. Well, the single to left and struck out swinging. Down three nothing, but again, Florimone, one of the few guys in the lineup capable of stealing a base. He's already stolen one. Pop up over the Twins dugout out of play. Texas beat Seattle 12 to four. They shredded. Felix Hernandez today at Safeco Field. Mentioned Doug Fister got ripped by the A's. And on the twin side, twins are trailing three to nothing, but Andrew Albers, two earned runs in six innings, a quality start, even though he's given up uh, two very long home runs. A check swing, but a strike. And it's 0 2 to Ramirez. Well, what I find interesting about uh, Albers' night so far, you had a quality start, only two runs uh, given up through six innings. And the guy that's really hitting the hardest was the guy that has not seen, did not see him over there. We're talking about, well, are they going to get to him now the second time around? I guess the answer is pretty much no. Because Perez has gotten to him the first time around. Royals have five hits, Perez has three of them. Now it's time for the Twins. Get going. We're rattling the bats around here a little bit. Good job there. Huh? Got another good jump. Perez had no chance to throw out Florimo. So there are stolen bases, and then you know you try to find something encouraging here. Florimo has stolen two bases against a left-handed pitcher. 
Yeah, that's, that's a, a good great, challenge on a right hand. That's a great point. I was just thinking about that as, as he matures as a player. One of his real weapons, if he can get on first base enough times, is that he can steal a base. He gets going very quickly, gets a top speed and a step or two. But the fact that he's he's reading left handers, and that wasn't just a, a go on first move, but that was a read, that actually was a read the move, identify correctly, and get a good jump. And that, that's very encouraging. Two and two to Ramirez. Twins have had only uh, two base runners to second base. In each case, it was Florimo who singled and stole second. They've yet to get a runner to third. And that's flipped into the seats. Making his second start this year against the Twins. Starting back on August 7th. Chopper to short. Florimone will get to third. And Escobar to Hosmer. And Hosmer just barely kept that ball in the glove that almost rolled through his wedding. Two down for Morno. Sure, what happened on this throw it was low. And he just barely was able to squeeze it. He trapped it in the trapper. Sometimes the ball will come in and hit your hand in a funny spot, maybe the just below the palm toward the heel, and the, the ball will roll in your glove a little bit, and you end up with a little snow cone there. Outside the Morno, ball one. Morno 0 for two. Reached on a fielder's choice in the first, hit a fly ball to right in the fourth. Average down to 260. We could go. Justin was swinging the bat as well as we've seen him in quite some time in Detroit. Didn't have a good series in Cleveland. And hit the ball hard in quite a while. One and one. To right. And Maxwell will wait a long time. Third out, end of inning. Florimon left at third. It's still 3 0. Home runs and two of the oh, only two really bad pitches in the game that Andrew Alvarez has thrown one to Alex Gordon and one to Salvador Perez and they did not miss them both of them long home runs. That's why the Royals have gotten their three runs. The Twins have gotten nothing going against Danny Duffy. He's had a good live fastball, occasional slider, but he's struck out a lot of guys. Not good with. 
Twins are much of anything. Well, at least the Twins have not figured out a way to have a plan up there against them that they can execute yet. Alcides Escobar leads off the seventh against Andrew Albers. And a bump foul, one strike. Albers with a quality start as he begins the seventh inning. We talked about Loramon and his struggles at the plate, principally from the right side. Last year, the the Royals thought that Escobar had figured it out. That he was going to be someone that they could count on. He had crossed a threshold. He had 293 last year. Fouled away. But he's regressed to the type of hitter he was in Milwaukee before the trade. He's hitting 235. Didn't have much power. Has some speed. Very good defensively, but that, those are all the things that we uh, uh, we say about Pedro Florimo. Fouled away again. Well, 260 or 270, and I think the, uh, from Escobar here, and I think the Royals would be very, very happy if we looked at Pedro Florimo. Now, 260 or 70 for him would be, the Twins would be ecstatic uh, with that, with all the things he can do defensively and the way he can run. But they're young hitters, especially Florimo. I think Florimo as a switch hitter has got to. There's that slow Good breaking chance. ball and it's yep. chipped into center field. Caught by Thomas Rowland. Bring up Dyson. The Fox Sports Girls Fantasy Football Draft is back. Tune in live to foxsports.com slash fantasy draft tomorrow to see who the North Girls select. Hosted by Patrick O'Neill and fantasy expert Ryan Fowler. The draft kicks off tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central. Streaming live on foxsports.com slash fantasy draft. Down on the seventh. Here's Dyson. There's a nice bunt. Albers bare hands it. Safe at first on a close play. So a well placed bunt. It was Dyson who dropped it down last night with the bases loaded and scored a run. And in each case, he just dropped it down in a perfect spot. Yes, he did. And the reason he was able to do that is because he stayed alone. Watch how long he stays with his head still. He bunts the ball first and then takes off. I would like all the twins. Potential bunters for hits to have watched that. That was the perfect, perfect way to bunt. That's the Rod Carew. Watch this. He bunt it. Now you run. Get a good pitch to bunt. Put it in a good spot, and then run. And Alvarez made a terrific play. He bounced. Off. He made the play as well as any Gold Glove pitcher could make it. Run to Jim Cott. Bouncing off. Pick up bare hand. Turn the fire. But the ball was placed so well, and Dyson runs so well that he gets a base hit. And and so many guys think they've got to be moving out of that box, you know, to get it going, and then they end up either making a bad bunt or fouling it off or, or bunting at a bad pitch. Gordon, the batter. Just like when you're hitting, you've, you've got to keep your head still in order to see the ball and make sure it's a good pitch and, and do what you're trying to do. Let's play, dice it back. No one has even attempted a stolen base against Albers until Dyson steal of third in the fifth. Now Dyson's at first. Gordon missed that by a foot. One strike. You were talking about bunting, but I think it's true probably across the board. Casey Fiend warming up. Players have to be receptive to instruction. And since you talked about bunting, I won't name the player, but a few years ago with Rod Carew in camp, working with some of the Less experienced uh, ball players about bunting guys with speed and guys who should be able to pick up a cluster of bunt singles over the course of the season. The ball flip foul. Um, this particular player said he didn't seek out Carew because he already was a good bunter and uh, didn't really feel he needed to, to improve that part of his game. Now the fact of the matter is that particular player. 
was a terrible bunt, <laughs> but simply outran some bunts for base heads. I mean, one bunt would go back to the mound, the next two would be in foul territory, and then one out of four maybe was placed near the foul line for a, a bunt hit. Yeah, Ted Williams came up and Ted Williams came up and offered me some advice one time. I said, no, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I, sure I, that did not happen. I, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if Rod Crew wants to come up and help you bunting, I think you'd stand there and work on it with him. And, and I agree with you. Two strikes. And they pitch out. Nobody going. But here's what Rodney did. Rodney did exactly what we were talking about. The only reason that, that I, I, you know, I, I hit in front of him for three years. I saw it. I, I, I saw him do it so many times. His head was still, and he was not moving when he bunted the ball. Just like a good hitter will be, his head will be very still. Uh, but the other thing was Rodney got a good pitch to bunt, just like a good hitter will get a good pitch to hit. You can't bat a bunt a bad ball any better than you can hit a bad ball. You know, and, and Rodney took a lot of strikes. Try, starting to bunt, he took it because it, the pitch wasn't conducive to him bunting it where he wanted to bunt it, so he just took it. Guys nowadays they make up their mind, I'm going to bunt, and you can throw it anywhere. You can throw it three feet over the head. They're going to try to bunt the ball now. It's amazing to me. Pitches that he would never consider swinging at, <laughs> they will try to bunt. One and two. There goes Dyson. Pitch swung on and fouled. And Dyson will have to go back to first. Gordon saw the 67 mile an hour slow curveball for the first time. And he was a good hitter to show that pitch to. Spread of 22 miles per hour. And I'll bet you between 67 and 89 over the course of Six and a third hittings, he's hit every digit on the speedometer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone in between. There. Everyone in between. I mean, that's what impresses me about him. Now, that pitch was 75 miles per hour. And with rare exception, the next pitch, whatever it is, will either be a little bit faster, three miles per hour faster, three miles per hour slower, but not the same speed. Right. It's absolutely right. And most times not in the same location not even close he's so good at at being on one corner or the other and that's that's what I like about it uh, uh, about the way he goes about it one and two another throw to first and if it had been on the other side of the bag they might have had Dyson leading I really would like to see him come in off the plate here to uh, to uh, Gordon as we look at the Kansas City Royals have become a very good running club. I'd really like to see it in there. He's going in good pitch. You see him diving out over the plate like that, and he's been looking for that pitch out there for two games now, and that's the first ball that has come in from a left hander. Good call by Herman and, and great execution by Andrew Alvarez. Come in there hard. He's diving over the plate. Then he realizes, oh, that might be a strike, and the ball's in on him before he knows it. Almost hits himself with it. Now he's set up for some other pitches. Another one-two from Albers. Now he's going back out away after showing him that one. Now he's got the slider. If he had gotten that just a little further out, he'd have gotten it. So what have we seen here? We've seen. 79, 87, or 75, 87, and 79 now, I believe, the last three pitches. Right, and I would come right back in there with that same pitch again that, that, that tied him up so badly. Bert Blylevin has talked about this, and we've talked about it during broadcast together. Bert said, you know, you come in there and then come in there again, really convince him that that wasn't just a, an accident, really convince him that you might be thinking about it. But he's going to throw in something slower on the outside, I think. Right to morning. Out at second. Good. 3-6-3 three, three, double play. Seven good innings again tonight for Andrew Albers, but the Twins find themselves behind three to nothing.
by McDonald's. Try the new premium McRap at McDonald's today. I'm loving it. By Toyota. Let's go places. To find your nearest Toyota dealer and check out our current offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And by the Minnesota Department of Public Safety. Josh Willingham starts the twin seventh inning, takes strike one. Twins were almost shut out last night, and they've been shut out so far here tonight, three to nothing. Willingham with a line out to left. Nice play by Alex Gordon in the corner, and then a fly ball to left field. Strike two. Willingham, Bluff, and Herman in the seventh. Pitch another good ball game, and we we're all interested how the Royals would fare against Albers having seen him once before popped up back and out of play he had faced everybody else in the American League Central once in order Kansas City Cleveland Chicago Detroit and now his second start against the Royals and it was a quality start three runs earned or three runs two of them earned on the two home runs. And look, pitch to contact guys, you should call them pitch to bad contact. I mean, they're not, just, right. they're not trying to pitch to the barrel of the bat for contact. They're trying to pitch to bad contact. And, and he does that. He's, he did it well again tonight, except for three pitches. Basically, three pitches. Two to Perez and one to Gordon. Off-speed pitch freezes. Willingham will strike out for the first out of the seventh, and that'll bring up Blue. Even when the game isn't on, you can still see all the plays and at bats that matter most during Twin Squeeze play. A 30 minute condensed version of select non televised Twins games. You can catch the action tomorrow night, Twin Squeeze play at 7 o'clock, only on Fox Sports North. Game in the afternoon should be toasty warm for that. And we are not televising it. We will be uh, packing our bags for Texas, where it will be toasty warm. Ball in. <laughs> one and no to Poof. He has one of the four twins hits. They've all been singles. Two of them by Florimone. Inside two and zero. Oh. So Trevor gets a chance now in this thirty bat against Duffy. He's seen a lot of his fastballs. He knows what the speed is. He should be looking for the, exactly the pitch that he wants here. And, and, and here's an important point. I think uh, when you're a hitter, when you get in a count that's in your favor, Tom Kelly talked about this in the pregame show. Look for zones in which you want to offer up pitches. And when you get to 2 and 0, your zones should get smaller and smaller. And, and then don't swing at it, even if it's a strike, and if it's not in the zone that you want. Got a high fastball. That was it. That, that was the one he wanted right there. And, you know, when you're messed up a little bit, that's the problem. You get. The foul back pitches that, that you really want to hit. That's it's tough to hit 94 miles an hour in the outside corner. It's a lot easier to hit in the middle, and he got one in the middle and missed it. Foul into the seats two and two. So now you see you know, pitch on the outside corner, and now he's now he's back to two and two, and he's got to fight for his for his at bat life here. I think very important point about hitting: swing at pitches that you want to swing at, and when you get them, don't miss them. In the dirt, three and two. You and I have talked about this before. You mentioned Ted Williams, but every interview I saw or heard from him when someone asked the inevitable question, what's the key to hitting? And he said, get a good pitch to hit. And then either he said it or it was inferred, then don't miss it. <laughs> well, missing a good pitch to hit never occurred to Ted. <laughs> he didn't do that very much. And I, I don't know if you remember, some fans may remember the great Sports Illustrated interview with Ted Williams about the art of hitting. And they had a him in his stance, and there were the, uh, the baseballs put in every spot around the uh, strike zone. And the batting average that he said he would hit if he sw had to swing at that pitch. Right off the end of the bat foul. And so the pitch on the knees on the outside corner, he was at 240. And the pitch on the inside corner about dealt high is about 390 or 400. Some pitches in the middle of the plate, he said he hit 430 if he got that every time. And and so his point was, I'm going to look for the pitches where I have the best chance of success, and, and then take everything else. Lifted to right in the ballpark, Maxwell. 
puts it away out number two. And the point there is until you get two strikes. And then when you get two strikes, now you now things change and, and you have to be able to be defensive and hit and hit more pitches. But what we see so much of the time now in big league players, as good as they are, is guys that get themselves in tough counts because they're swinging at they're taking two strike swings at balls before they get to two strikes. And that's you're just kind of giving away at bats at that point. Here's Herman, bounced into a double play, hit a fly ball to left. Outside ball one. Hundred pitches for Duffy, and in, remarkably for him, 70 strikes. It's a guy that has been a strike challenged in his professional career. And swing and a strike, one and one. See, there's a pretty example of what I'm talking about. That high fastball is not Chris Herman's pitch. He, he is a low ball hitter, and this pitch is not his pitch. He's got it one and all. Now instead of it being two and zero, or at worst one and one because you you took it because it wasn't your pitch, now he's going to get himself in a hole. Now he has to start swinging. There's a there's a pitch that you want to that you want to fight off when you've got two strikes, not when the count's one and one. Now it's one and two. He saw heavy diet of sliders last night from Will Smith. He he may see another one here on one and two. And he dunks it to left. <laughs> Not sure what part of the bat he made contact with uh, the baseball, but uh, he'll take a two out single. He does not care at this point. Ned Yell's coming to the mound, and Danny Duffy, in his first year back from Tommy John surgery, very likely will be taken out here. You see Herman here recognizing slider a little bit late, but staying in long enough to, as you put it, doink the ball to left field. And Called up to make the start tonight, and it was a good night for Danny Duffy. Well, against the Tigers a couple weeks ago, no earned runs over six innings, and another good one tonight against the Twins. Can swing for the fences with the new Home Run Derby mobile game from MLB.com. Available for iPhone and iPad and select Android devices. Download free today. Take your own cuts in baseball's Home Run Derby. Luke Hoshaver just off the paternity list, just back with the ball club today. Making his 45th appearance of the year. And he will be pitching to Chris Colabello. You know what's funny about Holshaver is my impression of him as a starter. Look at this here in this graphic the strikeouts to walks. Very good ratio, 58 to 16 strikeouts to walks. And my impression of him when he was a starter was that he battled control issues and walked a lot of guys, give at least the twins when he puts it some big inning potential because he was walking guys and he's not doing that out of the bullpen over there. Strike on the outside corner. 
Coach Shaver, I remember here in Minnesota, pitched a great ball game with Jason Kendall, pretty much uh, skippering uh, Coach Shaver through the ball game, calling the game. And, but other than that, my impression, similar to yours, Coach Shaver, a guy you could pretty much count on him throwing 20, 25 pitches an inning. But that hasn't been the case this year. One strike to Colabello. Half swing. I don't think he went one and one. Well, he is a bit of a head scratcher for the Royals, and you can understand he's got great stuff, a great arm, 95, 96 mile hour fastball, hard slider. He does have really, really good stuff. They they drafted him and expected him to be a real, real horse as a starter, and just that didn't work out. But he's pitching much better out of the bullpen. Down and away. See those takes right there, like uh, Colabello. Uh, those are not takes of a guy who's trying to hit the ball in left field. You see his back come forward, and he's, he's just checking the swing on the slider. If you're trying to hit the ball in right field, which is where his strength is, you're waiting longer. You see that ball longer. You're not offering at it quite so quickly. And you can tell that the young man is just a little bit messed up uh, right now because I do not believe that that was his approach. What we're seeing right now was his approach in in Triple A. Two and one. Pitch there right down the middle of the plate. Foul it back two and two. As I mentioned before, Tom Brunaski, hitting coach, working very hard. He, Bruno recognizes that, that this young man's ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark and uh, to right center field. And that's that's what they've been working on. I've, I've sat and watched them in, in uh, cage sessions uh, in batting practice. And off the tee and Bruno flipping them the ball. They, they work at it. They work at it every day. Hit high, but not deep enough to right field. Maxwell. I think that's David Lowe out there now. No, it's Maxwell. That ends the seventh inning. Ready for the eighth inning. Century Link Link to what's next? Tell us about Casey Fiend. We'll get my microphone adjusted here. Casey Fiend, a real battler, run guard and higher likes the way he comes right out here. His fastball that's de developed into a cut fastball that he likes a lot. Good fastball, real good uh, strike to um, walk ratio. Been roughed up on here a little bit lately, but he's done a really, really good job for the uh, the Twins this year in both the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning rolls. Albers 99 pitches, 72 strikes. And he's out of the ball game without a chance to win now. And uh, Fiend will try to put up a zero in the eighth inning, something that the Twins pitchers, two of them, Jared Burton and Caleb Fieldbar, struggled to do last night. It'll be Bonifacio, Hosmer, and Butler facing feet here in the eighth inning. That's 
getting a very good start from Andrew Albers. Tomorrow, Samuel Deduno, who has beaten the Royals twice this year, will make the start for the Twins against Bruce Chen. In the big leagues, when you go out to take the field to play a ball game, the only thing you can really hope for from your pitcher, the only thing that you, you really want to you want to hope for and expect is that he'll give you a chance to win. And, that, and I have to say, I think Andrew Alvarez has done that job in all five of his starts now. Three of them have been terrific. His first two, and then this one, I think, very good. As I said, as we mentioned earlier, a couple of home runs and got him at three runs against, but. With your team not scoring any runs, and you're not going to win with no, no runs, and your pitcher right to tonight has, has given you a chance to win, has kept it, has kept you in the game, and given you a chance to win. One strike to Bonifacio, and now two strikes. He's picked up by the Royals. He kind of. Fits their mold. He's been around a while, but he's still athletic, has great speed, can play a couple of different positions. The Royals have forever been looking for a second baseman, it seems. Chris Getz has had it for a while. Johnny Giavatella had it for a while. And uh, it might be that if he keeps hitting over 300 for his new team, that Bonifacio would be uh, projected forward as their second baseman. Can you think of a uh, everyday second baseman? For the Royals since Frank Wright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've had plenty of uh, people run through there. Getz, of course, used to be a second baseman for the White Sox till Gordon Beckham came along. Foul back. I think every team has that, though, at least the teams uh, that don't have an inflated payroll. Third base has been that for the Twins. Looks like the middle infield has been stabilized this year, but. Twins haven't really had any continuity at third base since Corey Koski. Right. One and two. To Bonifacio. Two and two. Well, you absolutely do. Every team does go through that, and, and it's pretty. Obvious why that is. You're not going to get an. You're just not going to develop an all-star player in a given position consecutively too often. Fazio chases the strikeout one day. Now let's go to Los Angeles for a Fox Sports One game break. Taking the loss, Dan Straley getting the win for Oakland. Here we are. We're just about done with August, and we have not seen the Oakland A's yet. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We have not seen them. We assume Chili Davis is still their hitting coach. Uh, Bob Melvin still the manager, I hear. <laughs> Left center. It'll be chased by Thomas, slicing away from him, and that ball hits the base of the wall. Hosmer has a double. Hit in a good spot and a long ways. A one out double for Eric Hosmer. I was hoping that George Brett would have remained the hitting coach for a little while longer. Watch a really good swing. That ball obviously right in the middle of the plate. And Hosmer doesn't miss that one. And I love the swing back through the ball to left center. When you hit the ball that long to your, to your opposite gap. Why even risk swinging over the top of one and hitting one ground ball to second base? Keep hit right back through the ball and hit it long and, and hard. But I wanted to ask Georgie if he would still with the club. What happened with Heisman? What did, did, did George do anything? I mean, he, he had a nice rookie season. He had an awful sophomore season. Then all he's come back. A little right center field gap and a diving attempt by Ramirez. Osmer got a good read. He's coming home. It's an RBI single for Billy Butler. Now a four-nothing lead. 
There's another example of a big strong hitter hitting, taking a big swing and hitting the ball down toward the end of the bat just a little bit and making it difficult for the outfielders to, to read right away how hard that ball was hit. Ramirez didn't get the best adjustment. but you see that ball off the end of the bat. They're playing in deep anyway. And as he hits that ball, there's, I guess we're not going to see Ramirez, but he got a, a bit of a late jump. He just, it looked like that ball was headed toward the gap as well and just kind of died out there because it was hit off the end. Salvador Perez, he had three rockets against Albers, a double high off the fence in deep right center. An upper deck home run to left with a man aboard, and then he ripped one right over his cap after he took exception to a pitch high and tight from Albers a few pitches before. The Royals only got six hits against Albers over seven innings tonight, and half of those came from a guy who had never seen him before. You see here, Ramirez and right field a little bit tentative and going a little bit sideways instead of in. It was really difficult. And a nice job by Hosmer going halfway, keeping his feet moving, and then when he recognized that the ball was not going to be caught, that he was far enough along and was able to take off to score that run. Swing a foul, two and one. White Sox leading Houston two to one. The White Sox are creeping up on the Twins. Looked like the Twins had a comfortable lead over Chicago in the Central standings, but it's definitely not comfortable anymore. Driven hard to left center field. Salvador Perez with another two run home run. Four times tonight, he has hit the ball as hard as a human being can hit it. Yeah, that's four of the best at bats in a ball game that I've seen in a long time. And that there were no balls hit other than the exact sweet spot of Salvador Perez's bat tonight. Absolutely hammered everything he looked at. So Casey Fiend comes in and suffering kind of the same fate Jared Burton did last night, only back then, last night it was in a tie game. As Fiend gives up three home, or excuse me, three runs on a double, single, and home run. Watch this swing. It, he was all over that. This is a powerful man, and that's a beautiful swing. Firm front side, head right on the ball. Big end whistling through the strike zone at the ball. That's that's a good swing. And that young man is going to be an all-star catcher for a lot of years to come, I, I believe. I, I really, really like this young man. Second night in a row where Ron Gardenhire has to go out and get a Normally reliable reliever and relieve him in the eighth inning. Last night it was Burton. Tonight it's Casey Fiend. Ay, ay, ay. There, the hitting coach for that guy in this, in this game. <laughs> he said, you know, 
That's exactly what I've been trying to get you to do, see? Yeah, and see, when the ball's over the plate like that, then you hit it nine miles. Pedro Grifol, the uh, new uh, full-time hitting coach, shared duties with George Brett until George stepped uh, aside a couple of weeks ago. Well, I, as I started to say, I wanted to ask, so we look at new picture Brian Dunsing and what he's done this year, and basically what he's done lately, be very, very good. I wanted to ask George Brett. I was hoping he would still be with the club, and I've known George for a long time. I wanted to ask him about Hosmer and, and what changed Hosmer around, and I think I probably would have asked him, nice uh, way to stay out of Perez's <laughs> way. The center, and right at Lee Thomas. Dunsing uh, seen him do that before. Comes into a ball game, gets a very quick out. In this case, out number two in the eighth. Well, we know exactly how important it is, how significant it is in a lineup to have a real good defensive catcher be an offensive force. And I think the Royals have uh, something to build on and build around and anchor this this team offensively and defensively in South North Wales. He's a very impressive young man. Strike on the outside corner. And I loved his reaction to the ball that was up in the middle. And even though I didn't like the fact that he was so worried about a ball that I didn't think being so close to him, he really handled that very, very well. See, that ball right there was not a whole lot different than the ball <laughs> that uh, Perez went down on. So I, I didn't like that so much. But what he said was, he didn't charge the man. He said, if you want to hit me, hit me in the ribs, not don't be throwing it in my head. And then he proceeded to almost take and. Andrew Alvarez head off with a line drive up the middle, and that's a professional way to go about it. Two and one to Jamie Carroll. He'd like to start picking up some hits for his new team. It's been a very slow goal for Carroll since the trade when we're in Chicago, leading a good series. And Carroll was dealt to Kansas City. Side. Carroll takes a walk. That'll bring up Escobar. Red Sox beat the Orioles four to three. And Breslow, the winner of the lead for Boston. Escobar with a liner to short and a couple of outfield flies. Wins not holding Carroll on and Escobar takes a strike. A 6 nothing Kansas City lead and this has been the norm this year. In every phase of the game. The Royals have outplayed the Twins. Starting pitching bullpen hitting. Defense. I mean, there, there's, there's no secret as to why. No, there's, the Royals there's no are dominating the Twins. Right. There's, there's, there's no head scratching about, about that. They're pitching uh, better on the starting staff. They're pitching better out of the bullpen. They're swinging the bats better. There's, and they're not, uh, they're not beating themselves with um, uh, poor defense or base running plays or, or whatever. We can get another chance. Should be an infield hit for Escobar. Similar to the ball that was hit down the third base line last night with runners at first and second. And Bluff on that ball last night tried to field the ball and get to the bag in front of, I think it was Perez sliding in. And it was the only chance he had last night. I'm not sure he had much of a chance tonight. No, I, I, that's a base hit uh, all the way. He had to try to. Get rid of it as quickly as as he could. I guess. I guess one. Uh, the only question I I might have is with uh, with that particular hitter whether or not he needed to be playing quite as deep as he was with. Uh, and I know he's no doubles and all that. But. 
to Dozier that ends the inning but a good one for the Royals as they add three more in the inning. Six zero right now. Stay with us directly after the game for Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. Take a look at the early pitchers duel. Is certainly Danny Duffy outduels Andrew Albers. We'll put you on the field with former World Series winning manager Tom Kelly. Our instructional tonight, all about infield communication. You won't want to miss that. And we'll go inside the Twins clubhouse and hear from the manager guys, Ron Gardner, coming up on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. All right, thank you, Kevin. Bottom of the eighth coming up. A lot of work to do for the Twins. Strike one to Clean Thomas. Thomas Floramone and Dozier. Twins limited to just singles in the game so far, and only five of them. One and one. Swing and a miss, one and two. Thomas has struck out twice tonight. Over the course of the game tonight, the Twins became the most strikeout prone Twins team ever. We still have, what, 30 games to go? <laughs> Foul back by Thomas. 31 games to go after tonight. Ball in front of it, Bonifacio. Thomas retired one away, and that'll bring up Florimo. You can be among the first 20,000 fans through the gates Saturday, September 7th. Pick up your one of a kind set of TC branded earbuds presented by T Mobile. Gates open at 4 p.m. for the 610 first pitch against the Blue Jays. You can get your tickets by calling 833 Twins or visiting twinsbaseball.com slash tickets. One gone, here's Florimo. To the extent there's a silver lining here. Floramone got a couple of hits right handed against Danny Duffy. I think of Floramone you mentioned uh, uh, for the Royals if Escobar were to hit 260 they'd be content given where Floramone is in his first full year in the big leagues. If they could somehow get him to 240 by season's end. Given you know his inexperience, uh, I think they would consider that uh, a season uh, well done. Well, I think you're right, and, and really, what's held him back has been his, his stats from the right side of the plate. He just hasn't hit well right-handed. Miss, and he's gone. Two down. He's got a ways to go, but I think he has the talent to be able to figure it out. 
if he finishes 240, that means in the final month of the year he will have figured out something. It seems like his batting average has been sitting around 225, 230 for about two months. Two down in the eighth, and now Brian Dozier. Dozier held hitless. He three times has hit the ball in the air to Gerard Dyson in center. Strike one. Chambers been around a while, a failed starter. He would be the first failed starter to become a star in the bullpen. Basically, what he's become for the Royals is what Latroy Hawkins became for the Twins. Really, a great point. There have been a lot of starters with really great arms that, for one reason or another, just weren't able to do it as a starter, but were terrific in the bullpen in various uh, various roles. One and two. Ball to right center field and Maxwell makes the catch. The Twins go down one, two, three in the eighth. So far, well, Salvador Perez caught up with a whole bunch of pitches tonight. He's the hitting star, one in the upper deck, one in the bullpen, one high off the scoreboard and right on a line single to center. Four beautiful at bats. Alex Gordon got in the party here with a home run, a long home run over the scoreboard in right center. And Danny Duffy, a terrific job of pitching against the Twins, throwing the ball hard, moving the ball around the zone. Twins hitters had. Very little to answer for Danny Duffy's stuff tonight, and they had no answer for this man at the plate, Salvador Perez. Royals up 6 0. Anthony Swarzak will pitch for the Twins in the ninth inning. And Alex Gordon will lead things off. Oh, I, uh, look at Swarzak's numbers on the air, they've been pretty good. You a body language guy, I guess. The, Kind of recognize it when a team has the other team's number. And we see that from the Royals, and we recognize it because the Twins had that kind of a swagger for a long time. But it's obvious to me, you look at the Royals, just their facial expression, they know they're better than the Twins. Well, I think the Royals, even, even uh, more so, I mean, I mean, the Royals like themselves as a team right now. And that, that's what I, I'm happy for, for them. I mean, they, they look around and say, yeah, we can be anybody. We've got the starting pitching to do it. The bullpen can hold guys down and uh, the other team down when we get a lead or give us a chance to get back in the ballgame. And we've got some guys that can run around the bases and, and, and drive guys in. So when you have all phases of the game working pretty well, especially pitching and hitting, 
We're not talking about defense or anything else right now, but I mean, just when you can pitch it and hit it, you have a little swagger to yourself. You know, I mean, they, they like who they are right now. When you, when you set a strikeout record, you know, for a team strikeout record, I mean, your, your, your swagger is going to be a little bit hard to find. You got nothing to swagger about. And a base hit to right for Gordon as he leads off the ninth inning against Swarzak. You know, we're at the end of the year. We're getting there. This is our last series against the Royals. It's the last time I will see them. And just based on what Twins fans and I have seen, it's hard to believe that the Royals are behind the Indians. I in agree the, with in the, that. In the standings. I agree with that. I, I, you look at, at what we've seen when the, when the Twins have played these two clubs. And the Royals look like a much better ball club than the Cleveland Indians to me. They've got a better uh, starting rotation. Their bullpen is better. Uh, the lineup. The Indians are strikeout prone. Is a strikeout prone lineup and, and, uh, and a terrible defensive ball. Club. <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> My goodness, that game on Sunday. I I didn't. I, I watched that game on Sunday. And I I just I couldn't believe what I was seeing. One strike. To Bonifacio. And now a ball. And it's unlikely that the Royals will get past Cleveland and three or four other teams they'll need to pass to claim a wild card spot unless the Tigers completely collapse. It's up the middle, hits the bag. And goes into short right center field and Gordon slams on the brakes and holds up at second base. Sorzak greeted by a couple of hits. And that'll bring up Hosmer. But I think if the Royals were able to get into the tournament in October. They would be the darlings of every American League fan and maybe most baseball fans except those who are captivated by the Pirates who haven't been to postseason play for a long time. No question about that. And I think I mentioned last night. I don't think that they're going to uh, that they have much of a chance to get in there in that wild card spot. But if they did they have the kind of team that could really really make some noise in a short series. You get. Three well pitched games from their starters I mean, with that bullpen out there, and you get some of these guys like uh, Gordon Hosmer, uh, Butler, and Perez to stay hot, and they could really, they could beat anybody in in uh, the American League in a short series. One and zero to Hosmer, and now ball two. I think what we we were talking about it last night, and it, you know their inconsistency, their their. The fact that they could reel off seven losses in a row with that starting pitching and bullpen, you wonder how that can happen. I, I mentioned last night. I think part of it is because they don't have an awful lot of power. Although if Salvador Perez, <laughs> he keeps. I mean, he could turn into a legitimate 30 home run guy. But they don't have the ability to score runs with one swing of the bat when a lot of guys are struggling right. as much. And, and most of the good teams that uh, that stay out of the long losing streaks have that ability to you get you get one well pitched game and, and, a, and a walk and air and a three run home run and you, and you win and break the you know and, and stop a losing streak. Bases are loaded, nobody out. And I think the jury probably is is still out uh, about whether or not they play uh, they play defense well enough to to uh, be an elite team. I'm not sure. I, I just haven't seen them enough to know if if part of their uh, inconsistency has been in the in the little fundamental things that you know, that you need to do well to to be a winning team. But I really do believe that part of the issue is they just they don't have a big bopper or two to, to just like you need a starter. Every once in a while you need a guy that can just stop a losing streak with a three run home run. Three home runs hit tonight, but just 94 on the season. They're the only American League team. That has yet to hit uh, as many as 120 home runs, and they've only got 94 with the three hit today. Yeah. But 
Butler hit a home run in his last at bat last night. Anthony Swarzak surely hoping he doesn't do that again tonight. Bases loaded, nobody out. Strike two. If the Royals go on and win this game here tonight, it means they will have not lost a series, any of the six series, to the Twins this year. Twins had a four game series here with Kansas City and they split the uh, four games. Otherwise, the Royals, including at least two, three game sweeps. Hey, Eddie Rodriguez. Nonchalantly. See, that's what I'm talking about body language there. <laughs> he knew he had that one all the way. No problem. Two strikes to Butler. Fisted foul. Sporzak shaking his head. You're not happy with the location. Can't quarrel with the starting pitching they've gotten against the Royals in this series. Correa seven shutout innings last night. There's a chopper, Billy Butler. He's going to get an infield hit and another run batted in. Swarzak stepped over the ball, but he had no play. Whether Kloof would have had a chance, I don't know. But Swarzak got there first. Well, even with Billy Butler's wheels, I think this ball is just in the perfect spot. I don't think there's any. I don't think anybody had a play there. Seven nothing. Base is still loaded. Perez. All he needs is the triple to complete the cycle. He's already hit two now, home runs, a double, and a single. You know, I, that raises a question that I, I want to ask you. Yes. That will play grounder. And Florimon does it himself, another run scores. Yes. If a guy's got a single, a double, and two home runs, I think that ought to be a cycle. Yeah. You know, I mean, he could have stopped at third on the second home runs and say, you know what, I'm, I, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hang here. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm going to hang here at third. I, I'm going to forfeit my home run. Well, every once in a while, you'll see it. Someone will get a cycle, and they will have had the triple, and they could have had another, and they will stop at second. They'll just glide into second base. Runner at third, two down, two in. And ball one to Justin Maxwell. A few years ago, might have been the last twin to get hit for the cycle. Jason Kubel hit a grand slam, a walk off grand slam to complete the cycle. Now that. One of the best cycles, yeah. I've, uh, maybe the best I've ever seen. That is an exclamation point at the end of a, an historic night, right I'm there. I'm telling you, maybe the best. Hit for a cycle I've ever seen or heard of. 2 0 oh to Maxwell. Ah! And a generous outside corner, 2 and 1. This is one of the things that the Royals have impressed upon the Twins throughout this season series. As good as the Twins' bullpen has been up against everybody else. Oh, the Royals have just teed off on the Twins bullpen, and they did it from the very first series on. I was going to mention when you were talking about how the Royals have beaten the Twins in almost all phases of the game, and it, it, there's so many of the uh, runs scored and the big innings have come late in games against, I guess, the bullpen of the Twins. Three and one. Ew. Actually got a hit in the forearm. Hopefully, a harmless. Maybe around the fingers. Ooh, he's really played well for the Royals since they picked him up. They got it, got him down lower on the forearm, but it's right at the base of the hand. Yep, 
up right down the heel of the hand. And the problem is when you get hit in the hand like that and the hand's still on the bat, that's when it, you get the most damage. It's, it's, uh, if you can get your hand off the bat so that, so your hand has somewhere to, to go with the, with the impact, it's a lot less damaging to you than when your hand remains on the bat and the ball slams into your hand that's still gripping the bat and kind of pinches or, or uh, compresses your hand into, into the bat. We've had both happen, and I'll tell you, if you, the worst part is if you haven't gotten your hand off the bat when you get hit. Swarzak has faced six batters. Swarzak looking over uh, to uh, acknowledge, or hoping to be acknowledged by Maxwell. Six batters face, and Swarzak's only retired one. Exactly what Ron Gardenhire was hoping for. This one to the right field corner, and a running catch made by Ramirez to end the night. A couple more runs for the Royals that they probably won't need. Game for the Twins, eight to nothing. And the Twins will face right-hander Aaron Crow. Wilkin Ramirez will lead things off for the Twins in the ninth. Aaron Crow, another great arm out of that Kansas City bullpen, about which we've been uh, talking so gloriously and, and deservedly so. A great bullpen, one of the best in, in baseball. And this guy can rush it up there. There's no question about that. He's very, very tough. Wilkin Ramirez will lead things off in the ninth. Mid 90s fastball, first one delivered over the plate, strike one. With some movement. David Lowe taking over in right field for Maxwell, who's probably getting ice on his right hand right now. Oh, no. One and one. Noon game, a 12 10 game tomorrow. Get no television. Uh, it'll be uh, a uh, squeeze play tomorrow night. Chop foul, one and two. Ramirez with one of the five twins singles tonight. Two and two. Here is Borno and Willingham. And 
swing, but he went. Another strikeout. Rare has been the game lately where the Twins don't strike out at least 10 times a game. That's number nine. Here's Borno. Borno 0 for 3, reached on a fielder's choice. Couple of fly balls to right. Strike on the outside corner. White Sox beat Houston 6 to 1. Chris Sale picking up the win for Chicago. Two strikes. And if uh, folks don't miraculously turn this game around, they'll just be a game and a half ahead of the White Sox. Two strikes to Morneau. A deep drive to right. Way back. Yeah, that's a word. And gone. On an 0-2 pitch, some measure of relief for Morneau and the remaining Twins fans here at Target Field. Well, kind of a uh, silly pitch, really, when you get right down to it. We got, got him over to and throw him a hanging slider right in the middle of the plate. Just let him right back into the bat with something you don't need to do. But good for Justin for recognizing that and getting it. And this, you talk about a power swing. That's about as good a power swing as you're going to see right there. And the result is second deck. Willingham takes a strike. Home run number 123 for the team. They've now given up 130. And for Morno, his 16th. Side chance yet of getting to 20. And of course, we don't know what the next couple days are going to mean for Morno or Josh Willingham for that matter. We will know more Saturday, the end of the August trading deadline. And even that is not a hard deadline. Every once in a while, there'll be players traded in September. It's just that those players can't be added to postseason rosters. Or included on postseason rosters. Escobar glides to his left. And that's out number two. Right. The trades of significance are going to happen before and by Saturday. No question about it. And there will be teams that are trying to position themselves for the playoffs, for the final stretch run, and then the playoffs. One of the, my most uh, memorable and favorite acquisitions in that regard was getting my buddy Donnie Baylor yeah. uh, right before the uh, trading deadline. and so that he could be playing with us in 87 and in September and be eligible for the playoffs. He had a run there. Baylor did. He went to the World three Series three, uh, three different teams. Three, three straight World Series with three different teams. Boston in 86, Twins in 87, and Oakland, Oakland in 88. Exactly right. And I will tell you this, that he, had a whole, he didn't do an awful lot for us through September and in the playoffs, but he hit what I will say was as big a home run in that 87 series as anybody we all remember Herbie's and Herbie's great grand slam that won that game six and gave us a sense that we were going to win the next day and win the World Series. But if Baylor doesn't hit the three run home run of John Tudor when we were down five to two in game six, we don't even get to Herbie, I don't think. And, and so those two guys right there, Baylor and Herbie. Quick look at our AT&T Twitter poll. Which league do you think will be the most dangerous? Most of you think the National League. This from a, an American League fan base. Can't argue with it because I, you know, American League's got some really good teams in it, but the National League, you've had the Dodgers catch fire. Yeah, if you look at the you look at the Dodgers and the Braves and uh, top to bottom. They're, you know, when you have that kind of dominant pitching and, and uh, both teams have real shutdown kind of starters. And you look at Kershaw with uh, with the Dodgers and Ryu and and those guys that are you know, pitching so well for the Dodgers, and now they're starting to hit the ball. The Bears can shut you down and then hit the ball out of the ballpark. They look awfully, awfully good. And I, I think the Tigers would get serious consideration if the starting pitchers weren't so inconsistent. We talked about the Ken Kenzie Wells being a little inconsistent with a good ball club. And you would think that the Tigers, the way that starting pitching is that they would have run away with it. And they, just, they just haven't done it. They haven't done what Atlanta has done. And right. you know, in, 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 in that division over there. A 
what Atlanta's done has been amazing because they haven't been pushed. And every time somebody starts to put even the slightest bit of heat on Detroit, meaning Cleveland, they just go in and, and win the series with the Indians or sweep them and yeah. put them back in their place. A walk to uh, Bluff and Herman will hit. Bluff goes to second. Royals don't care. Strike out to Herman. Herman single his last time up, just a little wedge in the left field. That was a shake. A shake. It wasn't a wedge. It was a shake. <laughs> it was a dead shake. One and one. I don't normally like to even say that word, but that's what it was. Herman at least put the ball in play all three times. Hasn't struck out tonight. Fouled away. Now he's got two strikes. One and two to Chris Herman. Twins avoided getting shut out last night in the eighth inning. They waited until the ninth tonight. And there's a strikeout of Herman. And the Twins indeed strike out ten times tonight and lose to the Royals again. And the final score eight to one. Indicative of the season series with the Royals, as we've been talking about, the Twins were out pitched in the starting staff, the bullpen, and they were out hit. Uh, all over the ballpark again tonight. Just a pretty good drubbing of the Twins by the KC Royals. Who are playing like guys that look like they want to try to make a run. Anthony Lepanto, the shame of it all, the Twins uh, manhandled by the Royals twice, but they've gotten a pretty good starting pitching so far in this series. It just didn't matter. Another night where the Royals got to the Minnesota bullpen. We'll show you how Andrew Albers kept the Twins in the game. We'll be on the field for an instructional regarding infield communication. Preview the series finale and hear from Ron Gardenhire all next on Twins Live. <laughs> 